chains are gone I dare to speak The cross has all the throne The grip for Jesus' blood That sets us free Means death to death And life for me Come on Our chains are gone Our dead is paid The cross has overthrown The grave for Jesus' blood That sets us free Means death to death And life for me Let's sing it again our chains are gone, our debt is paid, the cross has overthrown the grave for Jesus' blood that sets us free, means death to death and life for me. Tell him I give my whole life. I give my whole life to honor this love by the Lamb who was slain. I'm forgiven, the sinner's Savior, crown him forever for the Lamb who was slain. He is risen. Come on. I give my whole life to honor this love by the Lamb who was slain. I'm forgiven, the sinner's Savior, crown him forever for the Lamb who was slain. He is risen. Come on, church. I give my whole life to honor this love for the Lamb who was slain. I'm forgiven, the sinner's Savior, crown him forever. And for the Lamb who was slain, tell him my chains. My chains are gone, my dead is paid, the cross has overthrown the grave, for Jesus' blood, thank you God, thank you Jesus, can someone just thank him, can someone just thank him, can someone just thank him. Come on, somebody thank him. Somebody thank him this morning. Somebody thank him. Somebody thank him. Somebody praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give him praise. Someone bless him. Someone give him praise that we are saved, that we're washed in the blood, that we are forgiven. We are full of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you for saving us, healing us, delivering us, setting us free. I change chains are gone a debt is paid the cross has overthrown the grave for Jesus blood that sets us free means death to death Father God we thank you for this sacred Good Friday morning as we celebrate and commemorate the death 
the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Me and Pastor Amy join our faith with your wonderful people tuning in on this morning. Minister to them. Strengthen them. Encourage them. God help them to value what Jesus have accomplished on the cross of Calvary through his blood and through his death. We honor you this morning. Father God, we honor you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I dare someone to lift your hands to heaven and say, thank you for the blood. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Being dead to death and life for me. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High God. As we continue our series, The Fight is Fixed. I want to talk about this this morning. Jesus died for you and me. He died on that old rugged cross. And I want to take you into the book of Matthew chapter 27, verse 22 through 60. And I am going to read a lot of scriptures to you this morning. I just love the word of God. I love the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fight is fixed. Now, we talked about how Judas betrayed Jesus on yesterday. He absolutely sold him out. Sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. You will do anything when the devil get inside of you. And you got to do everything in your power to keep every door closed to the devil. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. If we, listen, why would he say that? He warns us because you can give place to the devil. And he's warning you and telling you, I put the power in your hands. Give no place. It's up to you, saints. You got the Father, you got the Son, you got the Holy Ghost, and you have your own will. And you got to choose to yield to the will of God on a daily basis. Jesus said, if a man wants to follow me, he must first deny himself daily. Take up his cross and follow me. It's a daily decision to follow Jesus. Judas had betrayed him. Now this brings us to Christ, his, his crucifixion, his suffering, his judgment. Matthew chapter 27, verse 22 through 60, Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They say unto him, Let him be crucified. Because Pilate had a, had a tradition that during that time of year, they would release somebody, a choice of the crowd, and they chose Barabbas, Barabbas, and the Pharisees had them yell, Jesus, what should I do with he that with him that is called Christ? They yell, crucify him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why, what evil has he done? But they cried out the more saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and wash his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. How wrong Pilate was. Even his wife sent a message and warned him. She, she said, I've suffered many things in a dream because of this man. I have nothing to do with this just man. But Pilate, he was a man pleaser. It will take more than water, Pilate, to wash your hands off of having Christ crucified. 
Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Lord have mercy. Then release he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. This is the thing that Isaiah saw when Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Pilate had him whipped with a cat nine tail. And we know this, those things have metal and glass on the edge of it. It begin to pull out pieces of his flesh. It begin to cut him up and the blood begin to pour from out of his back. But I thank God for the blood because the stripes he took on his back. You can be healed. I can be healed. First Peter 2.24 says, by whose stripes you were healed. Glory to God. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, these things was sharp and sticky. They pressed it. They put it on his head. They pressed that thing down into his scalp, into his brain and blood begin to pour out. Are you listening to me? And a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Little that they know, the Bible says, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. They were poking fun. They were making fun of him. But little that they know, soon or later, they would have to stand before this very Jesus that they crucified. Verse 30, and they spit upon him and took the reed and they smote him on the head. They was abusing him. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own clothes on him, his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. They were abusing the Son of God. Isaiah saw this. He was smitten. And yet he opened not his mouth. He was, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and a sheep before a share is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. They were abusing him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Even Jesus needed help carrying his cross. That's how heavy the load was. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of, of, of a skull. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him. They crucified him. That's when they stretched him out, laid him on that cross. And they nailed that, that soul there. They nailed the nail through his hands into the wood. And blood was pouring out of his hands. He had to been screaming. He had to been yelling because that's painful. This crucifixion is awful. It brings pain. It's torture. It's torment. It's death. They nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled. We read this the other day. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. He was dying and set over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. This was the devil working through these people, tempting Jesus. He was at the end of his rope. He was at the end of life. He was at the end of his mission to this earth. And he was being, they were still tempting him and saying, thou that destroyest the temple, and build us it in three days. Save yourself if thou be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. You know this is the devil because when he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Satan tempted him, if you be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. This was the devil working through these people, tempting Jesus all the way to the end. My God.
Likewise, also the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. They did not believe Jesus. He raised Lazarus from the dead. They didn't believe him. He performed all kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles. They didn't believe him. Abraham told the rich man, even if one come from the dead, they still won't believe him. Now that's some serious hardness of heart. Lord have mercy. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why? Has thou forsaken me? David predicted this in Psalm chapter 22. David said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? David actually looked into the future by the Spirit of God and saw the crucifixion of Christ. He saw Jesus crying those words out before God. Lord, have mercy. This is a fixed fight. Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man, he's calling for Elias or Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias or Elijah will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And another scripture says, he cried with a loud voice and said, it is finished. Glory to God. He said, it is finished. And he yielded up the ghosts. All of this pain, all of this agony, all of this suffering on that cross. Why did he do it? Why did Jesus do it? He did it for you. And he did it for me. I heard someone said, it wasn't the nails that kept him on the cross. It was love that held him on that cross. Love for you, saints. Love for you and love for me. He stayed there. He was the Lamb of God that came to take away the sin of the world. He stayed on that cross. It was the toughest thing in the history of mankind. But he hung there. And then he died. In another scripture, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He cried, it is finished, and he yielded up the ghost. He died. He died. He died. Love is what made him did it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, or rent in two, from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. The timing of this, it can only be God. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now you know some people were passing out and screaming when they saw some of their great-grandparents came out of the, who had come out of the grave and appeared to many before Christ took them up there with him into heaven amazes me right here in verse 54. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they fared greatly saying, truly this was the Son of God. Some of the soldiers believed 
and put their faith in Christ. No wonder Jesus had to die. This would be the only way some of these people would come to Christ is to be there and witness it firsthand. And the Bible says, when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus, so some of the other soldiers, when they saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they fared greatly saying, truly, this was the Son of God. They couldn't deny it. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. And we know he wasn't raised from the dead yet, but they believed. They put their faith in Christ. They weren't waiting further. They say, what for, I mean, they said, we got to do this. And they did. They put their faith in him. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. And he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. Jesus died. Jesus died. He died for you. And he died for me. And he's beckoning to somebody right now. I said he's beckoning to someone that's tuning into this, that's watching this broadcast on this Good Friday morning. He's, to, he's reaching out to somebody. He's saying, I did it for you. I did it for you because I love you. I'm ready to receive you unto myself. I want you come into my kingdom. I want to forgive you of your sins. It's time to quit putting this off. I want you right now to bow your head in reverence to God. And say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross for me. They crucified you. They murdered you in cold blood. You were buried in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. From this day, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it with all of your heart, let me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, be the first to say to you, welcome into the family of God. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Your sins, which were many, are forgiven. I want you to type below this video right now. I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Glory to God. I'm telling you, heaven is rejoicing over the decision you made to follow Jesus. I'm asking 300 of you who have never partnered with this ministry or never done something significant, and you know this ministry has been a blessing to millions of you around the world. I'm asking 300 people to make a commitment for the next 12 months to stand with this ministry and I'm asking you to do something significant to help us continue to preach this gospel around the world. We want to begin three nights of miracles in a few months, but we cannot accomplish this 
by ourselves. We need you to stand with us financially. We need you to make a commitment for the next 12 months to do something significant. And people, this is not a joke. This is not a game. I'm very serious about this. If you know you are able to do it, and you can make that commitment for the next 12 months. I want you to do something significant for the next 12 months to help us do what God is calling us to do. You know me and Pastor Amy, we take these things very serious. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account that address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry Cash App account. The ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Listen, Main Pastor Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.